not to be like the world and not to be like the great majority of American Christians, but to be like Jesus Christ. I don't know why you're clapping. I'm talking about you. What's wrong with you people? I'm serious. You can't say amen. You ought to say ouch. Hello, Humblebees. Welcome to Tulips and Honey. All right. Welcome back, Humblebees. Welcome back to Tulips and Honey. I am your host, Lauren. And today I am joined by our resident brother, Bee. Patrick, you have come back on the show yet again because um, I begged you to. And basically I bribed you with T-shirts. And um, and you came back to be abused again because nobody can see it. But up here I have some uh, pineapple pizza. Well, the people on YouTube can see it, but my listeners can't. I have the pineapple plus pizza equals heresy because you do need prayer for that. But you are Patrick from Cave to the Cross Apologetics. And we're going to be talking about a lot of uh, sort of political stuff, but not exactly political sort of ish things. I don't even know how to describe it. So take it away, brother. That's why you're here. (laughs) Well, I I blame your audience for this, uh, that I'm back because (laughs) there wasn't enough strongly worded uh, emails to to talk about how terrible and wrong I was about Romans 13. And then uh, to, to, to call out uh, pretty much both sides of the, uh, the end times debate uh, in our technology uh, discussion. Um, honestly, at this point, uh, I'm blaming the victim in this. <laughs> that's, that's a good idea. Blame the victim. That's, that's pretty yeah, much yeah. PC these days to do that. Um, I didn't yeah. get any hate mail about either one of those things, which I thought was kind of strange. I expected at least something. We're going to start guys- today. Yes, I should have uh, knocked on wood there before I said that. Don't send me emails about how knocking on wood isn't real. I already know that. Okay, it's just a joke. Um, But we are going to be talking about a lot of things that might make people sort of passionate. So just from the outskirts, so you guys understand, obviously, all of my listeners know that I am not an expert on any subject whatsoever, except for maybe annoying my husband. I'm really good at that. I could probably have a degree on that. The only kinds of degrees I ever am awarded is like first degree burns, second degree degree burns, whatever I'm cooking. So I don't have any kind of expertise on this. How many um, degrees and expertise do you have, brother, with the stuff we're going to talk about today? I mean, I'm a, I'm a red-blooded American that's got an opinion <laughs> and a gun, and I don't know how to use either. <laughs> and we have cameras, and you guys are listening. So we're, <laughs> this is really like a discussion about these things because there are some things... Uh, that are confusing to me and some things that I'd like to understand more. And so this is like a cool discussion where I'm going to ask Patrick a bunch of questions that um, I sent him last minute because I'm very unorganized and he's such a kind brother that he still came on the program anyways. So you're like a writing for notes punishment. up until like an hour before this time. So, so <laughs> I was lis- I was listening to those articles because I said and I'll link to these articles below listeners that there's there's 20 articles that I found on monergism.com uh, and there's like 11 pro and 10 con or something like that and I was I was re-listening to some of that stuff because even though I had listened to a lot of different things prior uh, my brain decided it didn't need to keep any of that information so ha- halfway up until this point I was like oh why do I not remember any of the stuff that I learned for this episode <laughs> I just want to say 11 pro 10 con in a democracy, the pros win. That's a good no discussion. Point. No discussion. We have, a, we have a democracy, right? Isn't, isn't that what America is? Uh, I mean, <laughs> it, it, in, in the, the, the strictest sense of the word, yes. Uh, but then you'll get the, the payload conservatives that will come on and be like, it's not a democracy. It's a constitutional republic. Republic. Yes. Yeah. You got to say it in the fun accent. It's a constitutional <laughs> republic. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Not technically. Sure. It just depends <laughs> on which state and which city you're in. Um, but hey, speaking of which, uh, you guys are over there in Michigan. We are once again, unfortunately, not taking an assignment in Michigan. But how is everything over there? You guys seeing a lot of unrest? Uh, well, uh, today the FBI announced that it stopped the plot to uh, have the militia kidnap uh, the governor. So we're doing fine. What? Um, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Probably just three people on Facebook just be like, hey, what if? <laughs> and now and they know probably, why like, one, of, one of those three people is actually an FBI agent. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what it is. I, it, I hope it, that's all it is. It's amazing how, how often uh, there's, there's a meme out there that I, that I took from a, a Christian libertarian uh, Facebook page. And it, it says like uh, FBI, uh, FBI plot foiled by FBI agents <laughs> saying like, 
<laughs> they happen to foil their own plot, and it just seems to happen that that happens a lot of times. That does seem to happen where they're always, you know, that's this is such a random squirrel, but my listeners love squirrels, and that's pretty much another thing that I'm expertise at. So, when I was uh, within the politics, since this is kind of politic political, um, whatever episode, sort of, uh, when I before I got saved, I was really, really big into politics. So when I turned 18, and I was I wasn't allowed to vote that year because. I, it wasn't an election year, but when I turned 18, I realized I was going to need to vote. I wanted to understand how that worked, and I didn't um, understand anything about politics or why there was two parties or that there was not just only two parties. I literally knew nothing. So I'm starting to research all this stuff and and very quickly deciding, you know, which side I'm going to be on and all that other stuff. And right around the time of the Tea Party is when this is all happening. So the Tea Party is happening. I've got friends that I'm working with, Dallas, Texas. Obviously, we're my, like we're we're going to be a part of the tea party down there and uh and, and so i started watching all this stuff and there's this particular guy who does episodes he gets interviewed a lot and he was uh undercover so all of his episodes that he does he's blacked out and his voice has changed because he was undercover in a nation in a different nation where if anybody knows who he is they'll find him or kill him or something like that and I found him on social media. And so I started sending him messages and talking back and forth, asking him questions and stuff, because I'm a weirdo that likes to ask people a million questions for no reason. And a friend of our family's was actually a CIA me- member. Like he worked for the CIA and he, he calls us all up and he's like, I need to talk to you guys. And I was like, what did I do? Oh my goodness. What have I done? I'm in trouble now. I've asked these questions to this guy. And then now, now the CIA is knowing about it and everybody's listening into our phones. And he just, he, his family member was sick and he needed us to pray for them. (laughs) (laughs) I just took that way far out of of the loop, but I was one of those people. And the fact that you had that fear though, (laughs) the fact that you had that fear shows just how free you are in this constitutional republic. It does. It really does. Don't you love it whenever you're just having a random conversation, you're not even using your phone and you mention something that you might want to go do and you pick up your phone and there's the ad for what you were just talking about and you haven't even <laughs> mentioned it. Isn't that exciting? It's not creepy at all. Um, <laughs> we used to joke that I was a tinfoil hat person back before I got saved because I was. And now my husband's like, maybe not. Maybe you weren't. And I'm like, I'm not yeah, getting back into blind? any of that nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> So it's how many times you wrap it around your head. Yeah, exactly. Two flights. Yeah. That's right. You have to get the, the heavy duty foil too. Um off brand, because on brand they they're just working for all George Soros and stuff. I don't know. I don't remember a lot about it now. It's been a few years, but I was totally disenfranchised at a young age because I was look, learning about all the politics and stuff and seeing, okay, well, it looks like there's a moral side here, like a moral high ground, of course, as as a millennial, that was what I was looking for. And, uh, and then I realized that actually there's not a high ground because both sides are essentially going to get elected and do the same thing. And so, uh, even though there's differences, I was early on really, really disappointed by the fact that there's not as much of a difference as I had thought there was, or that I was led to believe that there was. So I became sort of a libertarian early on in that whole March. And then I got saved and I was like, Oh, I've been worshiping at the foot of uh, like Rush Limbaugh and I need to not do that <laughs> anymore. So I had to take a little bit of a, of a sidetrack from politics for a long time because that really was my religion. Like legitimately, I spent hours each day listening to this stuff, researching this stuff, reading all these books. I campaigned for people like Ted Cruz. I mean, I was, I was all in for, for politics. So I had to readjust the way that I looked at the world and readjust the way that I behaved. So I'm really excited about this episode because I don't get to talk about this very much now, but before like we get into any sort of major uh, stuff for this, uh, you have a really epic podcast. So I was just hoping that you could quickly let the listeners know what's coming up on that. Uh, We're just going to like randomly scroll this because I forgot to do it at the very beginning. Um, Tell everybody what's coming up on your podcast so they can be excited and they can know that they need to go subscribe to it. Great. Uh, Yeah. uh, Came to the cross uh, dot com or any of your major platforms. If you want to look at us, uh, YouTube's the the way to do it. And uh, if you just want to listen to our voices, uh, especially Tony's because he's got kind of that deep, mellow school teacher (laughs) voice. So um, uh, we're we're uh, a, a podcast that uh, t- talks about other people's work, so uh, we don't have any original thoughts or ideas. And uh, and so what we like to say is we invite you into our book club that we were holding 
uh, before we started the show. And we would just pick up books that uh, that were apologetic in nature um, and discuss it. Sometimes we pull something about uh, uh, canon or, or something like that. And we've done one shots of those as well. And, um, and, and so we just kind of go chapter by chapter, break it down. We invite you into our book club and you're sitting around the table and you got your coffee on a Saturday morning or uh, Monday morning, if uh, that's when you listen to it. And, uh, and we just kind of discuss the, the book. And so, uh, currently we're going through, uh, Greg Kokel's tactics book. Uh, and, uh, we're just about ready to finish that up. In fact, we've, uh, already shot the end episodes for that. Cool. And then, uh, we have an, uh, upcoming interview. So that will be in four weeks about around there and then uh we'll start a new book which i don't even know yet but um but uh, yeah caves of the cross.com for all your caves of the cross apologetic needs so talking about okay so yeah. that is where you guys can find caves of the cross apologetics you're also across the line on social media so we can find you guys on twitter and facebook and so um yeah we're going to talk first about the difference between theonomy and theocracy. Do you want to kind of uh, lay that out for us? Because I want to I want to discuss theonomy. And for everybody listening, we're not going to discuss eschatology, which is apparently very closely tied to theonomy, uh, a lot closer than yes. I realized um, whenever I got this started. But because we don't want all of the hate mail that will come from eschatology discussion, we're kind of kind of just not do that yeah we just want to separate it into uh people who aren't uh republicans and democrats yeah <laughs> i just had to happen to be taking a drink whenever you said that that's all we're <laughs> gonna do so if you guys are i did see somebody ask the other day um on on some i think maybe reddit where they were like so i'm just looking to see if there's any other reformed liberals like i'm a liberal politically but i'm reformed as a christian and i was like wait a minute I. Uh, there's something wrong with this picture. Also, you're not going to find anybody that's going to gonna be in a group with you with that because uh, there's I, I, a lot. And, and like all things, it <laughs> depends on your definition. So what, what is liberal? What is what is a neoliberal? What is a conservative? Um, all that uh, uh, definitions matter here. And so yeah. um, um, that, that's, that's, the, that's the important part to take when, when we talk about this stuff. So, um, so in kind of the reform tradition, especially those from uh, Van Tillian and, and Bonson's perspective, um, you've probably heard the word uh, theonomy before, and uh, then you probably talked about it online, and people accused you of wanting to be uh, like a Muslim country, and you just want to put uh, women in burqas and uh, stop them from driving cars, and uh, probably Handmaid's Tale is now the big one, is is yep. that, and then it's like uh, celebrities are now saying, oh, uh, if you want to see us angry uh, we won't have premarital sex with men and the christians were like oh, oh okay when <laughs> when for everybody yes it's so <laughs> yeah. ironic that that is a thing that they thought was going to be bad i don't understand I, it, the world is just wow it's gotten to a, a really weird place because that's that's what thinking with your heart has gotten you that, that's 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 <laughs> disney philosophy right there are we um, supposed so, to listen to our heart <laughs> right as long as you can talk to the animals. <laughs> if they don't do your laundry, then you can't listen to your heart, guys. So. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> Too bad we can't do that for kids, too. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. So so uh, there's uh, a kind of school, two schools of thought here and and uh, what Bonson and, and the rest of them um, uh, kind of put into play here. And so there's an idea of theonomy, and then there's one of autonomy. And so that, that's kind of the two classifications you can go. So theonomy, theos, God, right? And anomy, namas, uh, means customer laws. So, so God's rules, God's law is what uh, should go govern society in, in uh, their view or in this view. And the autonomy, auto, self, and then namas, there's a rule or law as well. So um, that's uh, essentially what we kind of think we might have today. Uh, there might be some that look towards the Constitution as the... <laughs> 67th book of the of the, uh, <laughs> of the Bible, and uh, you know it was uh, uh, bestowed upon mankind from on high on uh, less than golden plates, and and so um, you know we we are are wanting to define uh, what's the proper role uh, in the Christian worldview for the law, and so these are the two ways that that uh, like Van Til and Bonston and a few others, uh, uh, Frame is is a, a kind of a proponent for this. Um, that uh, that you would you would factor in the worldviews in 
And so um, every ethical decision is uh, uh, derived from a final authority, ultimate standards. This is kind of, kind of uh, normal um, uh, talking points for presuppositionalism, uh, where we say uh, from our worldview, it's how we look at the world. And so if you have a biblical worldview, you are putting on your Bible glasses and you're looking at all of everything. So you, you dig up a bone in, in the dirt, you look at it, and uh, someone who holds to the young earth uh, viewpoint, worldview, will look at that and go, ah, uh, evidence for the flood. But then a scientist who uh, has uh, evolutionary worldview glasses on will look at it and say, oh, that's evidence of the transitional form of a fossil that somehow uh, got quickly covered. And uh, I don't know how we're getting blood samples from this, but we are, and uh, <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't need to do any of that. Um, and so both sides make fun of each other. Nothing ever gets accomplished or done. And so the proper way to deal with everything is to uh, put everyone under the boot of your own political system and make people adhere to that political system through force of might. Or not. Right. Because those are kind of the two. <laughs> so, That's what I do. So <laughs> the world uh, has this uh, self-standard, right? That they, they'll derive it from an appeal to nature. Uh, they'll appeal to might makes right. Um, that's the, the kind of autonomous view. Uh, it's, it's whoever has the best ideas kind of win out, but who makes the best ideas, those who have the most votes. So therefore that makes it the best uh, ideals. But then you talk about, uh, you know, failures of democracy and, uh, like any good, um, uh, philosophical discussion or political discussion, you have to bring in Nazism, even though Stalin Mao killed way more people than Hitler ever could have dreamed to kill. Uh, but right. we don't want to talk about those because, uh, those ideals are still in place in many people's uh, belief system as long as they do it their own way, because it wasn't done the right way before. But the Christian worldview, obviously our standard is the word of God. It's uh, primary, it's unchanging, it's our supreme rule. And so what is the best version of that that we want to look at the world through, especially when it comes to our view of government, right? The government plays a major important part of our life. Uh, we, we definitely would, would be lying or uh, would be incorrect if we uh, said that, um, government in some way doesn't impact everybody who lives in a society. Um, even if you live in a society that um, kind of self-governs away from a, uh, a big federal system, um, you still have a form of government. And so what form are you, uh, are you willing to consider? There? So I guess that's, that's the first one. Uh, the enemy and autonomy is, are the two worldviews. And then from there, uh, we can uh, go into theocracy and the enemy. Yeah. So my my thing that I noticed, and, and I just want to make, make this point real quick and see what you think about, like, what the solution is to this, and you, you kind of alluded to this a little bit, uh, is that both sides are not actually really discussing this kind of thing. Like, I, I mean, I understand that there's a, there's a difference between debate and, and just sort of having an online conversation, but whenever I listen to both sides, their opinion of one another is almost like anathema. Like if you if you don't fully embrace theonomy, I heard one person say, then irregardless of why you don't embrace theonomy, then you are an autonomist and and you just are believing that you know you can the you know the the whole thing where it's um, in judges there was no king in the land and so everybody did what was right in their own eyes and I and I thought that was fascinating because then whenever you listen to other people and they're saying well you know there's more to consider we need to look at all these things and. And there's a lot of different things that go to play in this. Um, those kind of people that are sort of making like an honest plea to just look at both sides, they're the ones that are really like beat beat to snot by both sides. And so what is it about about these sort of topics and these issues that makes people so passionate and angry? Because we're supposed to be very gracious in, in, in our circles. Uh, Calvinism isn't the only cage stage uh, version of anything that you might have. I <laughs> I, I, I know it from uh, cage stage uh, libertarianism. We all know it from, uh, uh, you know, just different different ideas that you're like, oh, here's something radical and outside the norm. And so um, because everyone's against me in this, I have to meet them in kind. Or, uh, you know, I, I think uh, the, the 186 characters of Twitter has really kind of shaped our discourse <laughs> where, where, you know, if, if you look at even presidential debates, uh, you have two minutes uh, to talk about how you're going to uh, give everyone free health care. I don't even know if I can define health care in two minutes, let alone, like, it's just a soundbite generator. And so if, if that's all you're wanting to do is, is generate soundbites, the Twitter is the best way to do it. Um, I was listening to the recent uh, discussion between uh, James White and Doug Wilson on 
uh, their sweater vest dialogues. And uh, they were <laughs> talking about this very subject. And uh, Doug Wilson made a really good point that said, um, I don't I don't offer any responses to critiques of Theonomy for those who haven't read uh, less than one book on the subject. I'm paraphrasing, of course. Um, and I think that that's a good idea is, is if you have some semblance of, of what the position is rather than what you think the position is, you know, it, again, it's uh, I, I want to start a, a Christian nation where only Christians are involved. Well, that just means that you want to uh, tell women when they can reproduce and you're just going to have 18 children. And if they don't like it, then you're just going to put them in chains and handmaid's tale. And he, here I'm, I'll dress myself up in handmaid's tale adornments. And th there I, I've made the point. Argument defeated. Like, is is that is that any way to have any discussion about anything? And so, th this isn't a left and right thing. We we all enjoy Ben Shapiro's gangster, you know, thug life responses, and it's like, yeah, but he's beating like a little girl who has zero understanding of the outside world. We shouldn't be, you know, accepting of, of this. It's like, I you know, I don't think there's such thing as male or female. Well, you're stupid, and here's you know here's my articulated version that I speak to thousands of college campuses on. Okay, but that person just heard it. They're accepting a worldview that they don't know that they're not supposed to question their teachers. They just came out of twelve years of not questioning authority figures in a public school yeah. to be lumped into more of that. So, what do you, what do you expect? And so having this kind of idea of like snowflake defeated all this stuff. It, there's no discourse, and and mm -hmm. so um, I, I I would much rather watch. A discussion rather than a debate um, uh, about subjects like this, where people can come at things with similar worldviews. Now, obviously, if you're talking about different worldviews, you're going to have just on the on the basis of the conversation a need to discuss where you start your starting points. Uh, but if it's two two Christians that are coming together, one says good to theonomy, one says no to theonomy, then I think you're going to need like you know twelve debates and and talks about it and. You're, you're going to have to say, oh, that's a good point, or no, that's not a good point, or can you expand on that? And you're just going to have to have two people that trust Christ, that love each other, that wants what's best, and um, they're not looking for a soundbite or to do a three-hour response video about how the other side is stupid. And so you're just not getting that. And so hopefully that's where books come in. And books, you can read the pros and cons, and you can see the argumentation, and you can um, not so much be um, impressed by the person's bow tie, but by their writing style and the arguments that they bring. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one thing that I talked to uh, uh, with Scott Christensen when we interviewed him, episode 13, I believe, uh, on our podcast, uh, where he took some of the best arguments for libertarian free will and responded to it. And Michael J. Kruger does this with, with his uh, canon books, and he takes the best the other side has to offer, offer and responds to it. And that's what we should be doing because. You're just going to make your straw man and then beat it down. You're like, ha, good, done. Okay, that's not my point at all. And I'm going to go on believing what I want them to do. And so you're, you're not moving anybody. You're, you might move more people in your camp who haven't heard about that for the first time. But it's the same way with any political idea is if you just want more people to have more voting rights on whatever issue or to count heads and say, ah, look, uh, Christian Republicans outweigh Christian Democrats by two to one majority. Therefore, <laughs> it's right. Like, no, it's it's just you have more people. Congratulations. You counted noses. We don't we don't do that for anything else. No one wow. says, you know, um, uh, I, I think we should uh, we should kill all redheads. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, redheads. Uh, you're outnumbered. So unfortunately, that's what we're going to have to do. Sorry, Ginger. I'm just following orders. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, I have a couple of things. First of all, bow ties are cool. So let's just get that out of the way because you mentioned bow ties and they're cool. Um, I, and also you did a, a recent interview with the Got Questions guy and he said he said something that was really impressive to me that they have a few hundred volunteers that aren't always in agreement with everybody. And what they do is those people, what they have disagreements and they don't let those people answer those specific questions. They help with other things. And that way you avoid that um, that whole confrontation, that whole issue. And I thought that was really helpful to see like, okay, well, here's somebody who's actually saying, hey, we, we don't have to have this out every single time. Like the, the whole fight, the whole argument doesn't always have to be there. And then in this latest, uh, uh, not article, but episode that you guys put out, you talk about steamrolling and how to avoid that and, and ways to, to get, get through that because 
there's a lot of steamrolling that happens. And unfortunately, it's happening in, in Christian circles, which is sad to me to see um, in, in our circles where there should be a lot more grace. We have the ability to turn our, our computers off and walk away. So why why not do that instead of just keeping it going? So I think that that's really helpful uh, advice that you gave just, just to say, look, if you're going to have this conversation it needs to be a long drawn out, not, not something quick, not sound bites, because these are, I mean, when I was just trying to understand these, I wanted to do a whole episode just on theonomy. And I was like, that's not going to happen. That's a massive subject. There is so many things to consider so many little and, and different, different perspectives, even in the sides that all agree with one another. And I was like, well, we're going to expand this a little bit and talk about some other stuff too, because that's, uh, that's difficult. There's a lot of books too, like, a lot, just hundreds of books out there about these kind of things. And it, it's a, a little bit, not discouraging, but I don't think that it paints the best picture of Christianity for people on the outsides that, that are actually just looking in to see the soundbite generation taking over the church. That's that's not helpful at all. I, I personally, as, as a millennial, what I appreciate about Reformed churches is that they don't do stuff like that. So I don't want to see it grow in that aspect. So help us out a little bit here uh, because I love the term theocracy and I really, really enjoy learning about theocracy. I had a little bit harder time learning about theonomy, but w- have there been times after you explain uh, the difference there, cause it's important. Have there been times where these things have even worked? Cause obviously we don't have a theocracy here in America. Has, has a theocracy ever worked anywhere that we see um, like here on earth and not, heaven where God is king thing, you know, like down here with sinful people? Yeah, and, and that's the, the good question, an important question. Uh, and so we should definitely um, um, clarify what we're talking about here as far as our definitions, because definitions matter. And uh, again, if, if you disagree with this definition, I'm sure there's more robust definitions. Um, and that's great. Add to the conversation. Uh, you know, uh, Patrick's an idiot and he doesn't know what he's talking about. And hey, uh, true, I'll, I'll, I'll grant you that. So there's no need to listen to me. You won. Good. Go, go from there. Do your own thing. Um, so, <laughs> so theocracy is uh, God's law governing a nation. And theonomy is God's law governing a nation where God's law and his rules are, are written in people's hearts. Uh, so we can kind of think of it this way. Theocracy is uh, God's law is uh, is the standard by which uh, all laws are derived from, and then it's applied downward. So, the Muslim, the atheist, the Buddhist, the nominal Christian, the uh, uh, Reformed Baptist, uh, whoever it might be, all gets whatever version of the implementation of God's law handed down to them that they must follow in a uh, governmental system that they. The only means of escape is uh, through a movement out of that particular body. So top-down perspective. Theonomy says, um, here's a group of people that have the law of God written on their hearts that agree to the standard uh, of, of this definition, are applying um, particular standards, hermeneutics, implementation, and they're uh, deriving leadership and government from the implementation of that. So it's then a top up perspective of how it's enforced. And so with one, you're starting with a roof and you're putting the walls and the, the, the base involved. And so you're essentially ruling over people with God's law, whatever that might be, regardless of, of where they've implemented. Uh, and the economy is you're starting with a base, you're starting with, with a certain set of standards and you're saying, uh, can we in this particular area agree to this uh, as our standard, and then uh, uh, the the working out of that standard into particular ideas and particular understanding of God's law when it comes to ceremonial laws or uh, um, uh, moral laws or just the the civil law and how that's implemented. And um, you know, there, there's there's uh, disagreement on on every facet of that, and that's great. And that's mm-hmm. for a different episode that we're definitely not going into here. And so then it's a bottom up, and so that's how it's worked. So I, I would say this. All theonomies are theocracies, but not all theocracies are theonomies. So if you have a theonomy that you've built up and you say, here, uh, we agree to be governed by the law of God, and John Calvin is our president, El Presidente, wherever he be president, that's a theocracy. But a Muslim could come in and say, 
Uh, we're going to be ruled by the Quran, and everyone who uh, who, who does that uh, uh, will suffer the consequences, regardless if you agree or not. Unless you want to change the system, good luck doing so, uh, because you're never going to get out of the the initial worldview um, discussion. And so we're going to rule you by that standard. So good luck. And so that's the the top down approach. So top down, bottom up is is the distinction between the two. Um, has has it ever worked before? Uh, yes, it's worked before. But what do you mean by work? <laughs> how long has it been implemented? Um, uh, how well does it work? Um, and you know, th there's there's a uh, discussion about it. So your household is a theonomy. You are governed by a general standard principle that you agree to. And uh, with concern to kids, it's always different, but you have a tacit agreement among the people in your household to be governed by that rule. And so you say, you know, uh, we go to, uh, uh, church because we are part of God's people and Presbyterians take that for whatever you might want it to mean. And so uh, we agree to that and abide by those rules. We derive our rules from uh, premarital sex to drug use to whatever it is in a standard. So you are engaging in a theonomy within your house if you're setting a Christian standard by the Bible. So yes, it always works, except when it doesn't. And sometimes you can get outside the family unit but the family unit is going to be your primary location where you're going to be able to view that. And you're going to be able to view that because everyone has a bigger stake in it. And that goes for the most local level to the most top. Now the most top can always enact the worst restrictions on you because they're, they're the big dogs. They're the ones that derive the power all the way up unless it's limited in some, some capacity. So uh, you have like John Calvin's uh, Geneva, was a theonomy of sorts, and then it fails for whatever reason. People go away from the standard. Um, people don't enjoy it. Uh, it gets it gets taken over by other countries, uh, what, what have you. Um, in some capacity, uh, um, you know, the United States had certain degrees of theonomies, uh, like Pennsylvania uh, being one, uh, where even prisons were regulated by um, by uh, William Penn's kind of principles, where. <laughs> Uh, you had uh, contemplation for your crime. You had uh, silence in the jails and a high suicide rate because of that. And so um, a, a lot of our stuff. So when you heard the term penitentiary, that actually comes from William Penn. So Penn oh, that's cool. So there's your, cool. your uh, $80,000 uh, college lesson for you about where prisons came from. And so that. even having like pods and stuff like that, uh, s separating out uh, different types of offenders um, comes from a themonic system. And so um, uh, as far as theocracy, theocracies only go um, uh, as well as those who hold the power at the top. Uh, once you become secularized, uh, it tends to fall apart because you're not adhering to a standard. And so you're breaking off um, from that. Mm -hmm. um, I would also argue that in some capacity um, that, uh, that ancient Israel, uh, when they were forming you know, Israel, was a theonomy. Um, Exodus 24, 3, 7, and 8 has a, a good call and response. It's a, a call by God to live a certain way and a response from the people to say, we agree to it. So there's a, a voluntary system of, I agree to live by these principles. I'm going to live in this land and follow these rules. And if not, I, I'm going to go elsewhere. And so there's a, 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 an explicit, not a tacit, explicit agreement to the standard. And then people, are held, are held accountable for their initial action. So, for example, uh, if you buy a house and you sign on the dotted line saying, um, I, I owe the bank $100,000 and it will pay it off in 30 years, um, you can't then all of a sudden say, uh, I, I disavow that. Uh, I, I don't want to do it anymore. Sorry, <laughs> I'm out of here. Uh, bankruptcy, you know, notwithstanding. But you can't just, what, what you agreed to is, is the set of standards. Of, of of your word, it's a, it's a an, an actual outpouring of of your person. Uh, you know your your signature on that line is is a product of your labor, and so you own it in the same way that you own property or your car or uh, your um, your 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 a business. And so um, so you had that in um, in Exodus established early on. Uh, you have it in First Samuel eight seven where. The people actually love the king, but not God. And so there you have, uh, in, a, in a theonomy, the people can overthrow or leave the community. 
who violate the ultimate rule and they failed to do so. They should have they should have held their leaders accountable to a standard and they failed to. And so that's when God comes down with the prophet. And usually bad things happen if God has to 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 send to send the the person to come talk to you. You know. Right. So right, yeah. that's uh first Samuel eight seven. And then God talks about always uh, preserving a remnant that follow him above all, even in exile. So you have uh you know the stories like Daniel, uh, you know, uh, and, and um, Isaiah uh, 65, 9, the, the, that the Lord will preserve a remnant for himself. And so people will be the- theonomic within their hearts and they want a theonomy of, of some type in their in their community, right? Whether that's the church, right? The church is a the- theonomic system, uh, even if it's congregational led, um, it imbues powers from a base to a, uh, a a ruling class, a, gov- a governing authority, who are ruled ultimately by uh, the standard, and if they violate the standard, they're they're excommunicated, they're they're broken off, they're um, set aside, they're talked to. You know, there's 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 different ways to, to handle that. And so so um, so yes, it's been done. But as far as what's worked, if you're talking about something preserved from you know Egypt to Egypt times to to now, uh, no. But at the same time, yes, because people have their own versions of, of theonomies as well. Well, that's a really good answer. I didn't even consider about uh, the theonomy of the household. Uh, but theonomies in a household would be really, really great. I think that's fantastic. And I love that idea of really bringing this into a different perspective because the people who would say theonomy um, as it imposed overall would be really, really uh, dangerous. And they've got all these different things and the handmade tale and stuff comes up. But I will. I was wondering if you could address really quickly when I talk to people who are proponents of abortion, they very frequently will say, you can't impose your religion on me because you only believe abortion is wrong because it's in scripture. Now, scripture is my authority, and that is where I'm going to to show them as a presuppositionalist, God's word is, is always where I start. So what would you say to somebody that says, this isn't a theocracy, you can't enforce your theonomy on me, um, I have the right to kill my baby in the womb what is your response whenever people say that's not how this country works uh that it's a particular system of of belief is what your religion is and so by uh by telling me that i can't enact my religion on them they're acting their religion on me and i don't appreciate them uh, failing their own standard oh, snap. <laughs> you yeah. guys can write that uh, down real quick rewind it if you need to write it down keep it in copy paste <laughs> yeah so yeah, so uh, you just uh, believe it because God tells you to, and uh, we also have a, a right for life, and we have a definition of of uh, where life begins, and um, there are you know you, you can also make a a, um, a, a particular scientific uh, idea of where life begins, and that's, that's the creation of different DNA, and uh, most people will agree with that, except for when it comes to the topic of abortion, because you always need to leave yourself out. In fact, we we covered this, uh, I believe, in this uh, past episode, maybe an episode or before, uh, of uh, Greg Kokel's book about how uh, the definition of abortion um, actually um, fits for every criteria for murder, except uh, in California, except it carves out a particular case of the mother consenting. So, uh, you know, uh, uh-huh. Scott Peterson uh, stabs his, his wife and unborn child. Um, there was a federal law that made that. A, uh, a double murder well except for abortion because uh you know you you, you have you have you have consent there so so obviously that that's not the case so uh you know you, you can uh, tr- try and apply that standard elsewhere elsewhere yeah. uh but yeah that, I, I would say that uh um it, it, everybody everybody uses their idea of belief of, of right and wrong to determine right and wrong and th- that's what they're asking you to do is Stop applying your standard of right and wrong to my idea of right and wrong. Okay, <laughs> just say you don't agree with my standard. I'll I'll agree the same way, and then we'll we'll fight about it, and whoever has the most votes wins because that's that's how yeah. we determine right and wrong in this country. Yeah, right or electoral <laughs> colleges. Um, no, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding, guys. Don't write me. I'm I'm just kidding. I was just joking about the electoral colleges. Please don't send <laughs> me stuff about that. Okay. There's a real good reason for all those things. I'm sorry. I, this is why I love talking to people uh, that aren't in our country, because I can make ridiculously um, silly c- comments about like electoral colleges versus popular vote. And they don't they don't care. And so we just move on and I don't get any emails from them. So but anyway, <laughs> um, OK, well, speaking of these sort of things, last time uh, we talked about 
something similar to this. We did an episode about uh, Romans 13 and, and listeners, just in case you guys were wondering if we're mentioning episodes, I've linked to it down below, or if you're listening on uh, YouTube, there'll be cards up above to some of them. And, uh, and it'll be like a little link that you can click. I can't link to all of them. Cause I think we've like mentioned a whole bunch of different episodes that we've done, but yeah. uh, the Romans 13 episode that we talked about, you were wearing a Christian anarchist uh, shirt. Christo and I can't remember exactly how it was pronounced, but we didn't get the Anarcho chance Christian. to talk about. It. There you go, there you go, and uh, we didn't get the chance to discuss this, which is a shame because I think that uh, anybody watching would have seen that and been like, "Oh, that's horrible, terrible, what a terrible, horrible thing that you have." Yeah, right. But it's actually not terrible, horrible. It's actually fantastic. So, will you please explain that? In I mean, it, it fits pretty well with with what we're what we're talking about. Tell us about your your anarchism. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it means that uh, I draw an A in a circle on every building with spray paint, <laughs> and and that uh, that I want to burn the system down and destroy property and uh, steal shoes. That, that's fine. Yeah, steal lots yeah, of whatever. shoes. So, uh, so uh, you know the status quo. I, I just believe in the status quo. So yes, uh, as as opposed to the uh, kind of popular definition uh, of misdefinition, uh, you know, it, it's kind of uh, classical liberalism is had to be called uh, uh, libertarianism because. Uh, the liberals stole the the good word for for libertarian, and we needed to come up with a new name, so we just succeeded control uh, to that. And so, anarchism again is this this system of government because it is a system of government that values individual liberty and freedom without coercion or rules. And so, we have we have a system of government where we don't believe in a a full full on um, uh, a top down approach government, uh, but we uh, we value individual liberty and freedom. And uh, we order ourselves without coercion or uh, uh, rules that are are enforced in a kind of de facto way of just uh, some people agreed upon it, therefore it is and done. Um, and so uh, the Christian aspect of the anarchism, why well, you have to add Christian to anarchism, um, is uh, because that's the worldview point. So uh, Christian is the ultimate worldview one would operate anarchistically and so uh if you uh go into mcdonald's and you tell the person hi i have a dollar and the person says great i would like that dollar can i give you a hamburger and you say yes i value that hamburger more than i do that dollar here is the dollar for the hamburger and they go thank you can you then take this hamburger for this dollar and you say yes i will thank you and you leave without punching each other in the face (laughs) congratulations you're an anarchist you 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 entered into a contractual voluntary agreement between uh, consenting adults that came out through no coercion or force or violence. We congratulations, you are now an anarchist. And so Wee. Christianity is just is 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 again that that standard the the the, the foundation which we build up from. And so uh, what anarchists believe is just the proper use of force, which is uh, uh, the guiding principle. So. Uh, from a Christian standpoint, it's the golden rule, you know, do unto others as they would have it do unto you, a positive approach rather than a negative approach that a lot of other religions use. And so uh, within kind of the um, the nomenclature of the political system, we call this the NAP, the NAP, the non-aggression principle. And so this, this just says that you can't use force, threat of force or coercion against nonviolent people. You can obviously use um, you have the ability, I should say, to use force to protect yourself in a defensive posture. Uh, and that doesn't mean that you have to wait for them to, to make contact with your face when they're punching you to, to respond. You uh, Obviously, uh, if someone's pointing a gun at you, you don't have to wait for the gun to go off in order to uh, view that as a threat. Um, you, you also would view uh, a, a form of aggression um, if someone were to write a contract uh, uh, against you where they lie and you you enter into an agreement with a false understanding of, of all the terms and services within that contract. And so contract is um, kind of the basis for uh, laws and uh, uh, legal bindings uh, within uh, a anarchist system. And so um, uh, you have a, a defensive force, which is appropriate, reasonable, measurable, and against uh, direct threat. And actually, we view this same type of standard within Augustine's uh, just war theory. A just war has to be exactly like that as well. And so this follows in, in a, a uh, uh, theonic uh, um, uh, derivation 
And so we, we draw principles from, from, um, from the Bible too. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. What does that mean? Well, if someone uh, stabs me in the eye, I can stab them back. Uh, it's talking about appropriate responses to uh, slights. It, it means that, that you know, if, if someone uh, punches you in the eye, you don't punch in two eyes because you deserve double the, 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 the punchiness. Um, but there are, there are um, things like uh, double proportionality for theft. Uh, in, in the Bible, and so uh, that's a, a different response than, well, we'll stick them in jail, and uh, they they'll they'll have six months, and they'll get out with three with good behavior, and uh, we'll say that society was slighted, not you, and so you might get paid uh, maybe two hundred dollars back of your thousand dollars that that uh, that they stole from you, but uh, they're going to have to pay the state first because uh, they're the ones that prosecuted for your behalf. You're welcome. Don't you feel like justice has been served? What is justice in that system? I have no clue. I have no clue. Then what you get to pay is. taxes and, to feed them while they're right. in jail. So, right. Meanwhile, they yay. just sit there. They learn to be better criminals. Uh, mm-hmm. but I, I, everyone, I think everyone is in agreement. And um, I, I watched the show uh, six days in, but they talk about how the criminal justice system, the the jail system, is is broken. It needs reform, and everyone talks about how that's true. It needs reform. It needs reform, and no one reforms it. Uh, I think MacArthur <laughs> has has a quote about how. Our society doesn't need reformation. It, it needs uh, revolution. It needs to be overturned as, in, in the sense of it needs to, to, to have a change of heart. And that's that's where the revolution comes from. It doesn't need a, well, we'll replace it with this uh, better one because we've done it. And so, um, <laughs> and so uh, um, the, the anarchist uh, uh, in this worldview uh, believes in a, a voluntary system uh, that they're uh, that they're in play. Uh, we uh, we adhere ourselves to contracts or tort laws or uh, agreements between parties. So, uh, you know, I I want to move into a neighborhood where uh, no loud music is played after 9 p.m. Well, he, here my neighbor is playing at 9:02 p.m. loud music, so I'm going to go over there and punch them in the face. Well, no, we have a contract where disputes are regulated against, and so. We have the ability up to and and including uh, excluding that person from the environment that they agreed to in written form with with standard protocols and and agreements and they've signed on the deadline and they were not drunk and and they were in full <laughs> knowledge of what they were agreeing to so so right. the 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 anarchist is wants to be a better person because uh, they derive anything through the use of force as as a non moral system and so. I don't, I don't think that I should tell people to not do drugs by the point of a gun because because I view uh, uh, drug use as immoral doesn't mean that I should use an immoral means to stop you from doing it. I should right. want that away from me, my family, and so I would want to enter into a like-minded agreement with other people and exclude other people. And that's a that's a big thing that we don't want to talk about these days is excluding people. Heaven forbid we we tell people not to come to certain places, and oh, we tell so full of you know, hate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's the only way it's done. And so we we um we don't want to do it from we and we don't want other to to have other people do our dirty work. We don't want to tell people not to do drugs, uh, but it's okay because I told government guy over here with a shiny badge to to tell you not to do it. And so uh, your life should be ruined because of of bad decisions that you made there. Let your bad decisions be bad decisions, but you can be part of an environment that will do that as well uh, through your own agreement. And so uh, if you want to do drugs, if you want to have a community full of drug use, well, guess what? Uh, that's happening. Look at Colorado. Colorado is a <laughs> subset of anarchism. It's a subset of anarchism. Uh, the the yeah. federal government has declared that they are somehow, that they no longer derive the power from the states, that but they're imbued to rule over the states. And so they can tell the states what to do um, from from pretty much any standpoint because the uh, Commerce Clause has been uh, pretty much put put to death on on, yeah. on any form of anything that doesn't conform with a, a well, you'd have to make a, 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 a particular product that you only derive from the the means on your land and no other ones. And that's the only way that the government, federal government can't regulate it through the Commerce Clause. Um, and so uh, what Colorado has done is they've de facto started an anarchist state, but only through drug use. I wish they would do it right. through other means. And 
and and see how that plays out because I think that's essentially what this nation was supposed to be was um, 13 or 50 or 132 or uh, 250 million or you know 500 million or who who, who knows who, who cares certain degrees of experimentation where you're like well that person died of over an overdose of heroin I probably shouldn't do that I probably won't do that in fact I don't want other people to do that so let's come to an agreement and start a, a community that agrees upon that. Or right. uh, I feel sorry for people like that. And so I want them to come to our community and here's a, an appropriate means of, of help where we can um, have, have you do heroin in a safe place, one filled with nurses, and we've checked the quality of the heroin. And so where it's not being cut, which is what most people die from heroin. And we want to help you get off heroin because that's ultimately what we want. And so we can start that society. But if we only have a top-down approach where only one standard is the key, and right. that's just imbued upon people, then what we're saying is, I'm okay with violence if blank. And so that's what uh, Christian anarchist uh, uh, tends to want to stop, is, is the immoral uh, use of violence that if anyone else ever did that, that didn't have the word government at the end of their name, uh, would be just as, as illegal. So if I come to yeah. your house, I stick a gun in your face and I go, give me $120 and I will give Twenty dollars of that to the homeless, and you would go. Uh, I'm calling the police because that's robbery. I go. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to lead with. I'm with the IRS, and you're like, oh well, you know. I I guess I agreed to this when I stayed here, maybe. Uh, but what what if I don't pay? Oh well, then I'm going to get those police officers to come and stick a gun in your face to mm -hmm. give that to me. And so so okay, so that just seems like robbery with extra steps. Right. That's all that is. Yeah, I, I think that's really fascinating too because. <coughs> Um, when when we uh, look back at the history of this nation, I, I feel like there uh, would have been a, a lot of uh, concern about even like uh, 1% about what we see today with these things, especially with the federal, the way that the federal government is dealing with the states. And I know that that's sort of individualized here for America, that there was there was supposed to be 50 states or however many states we want doing these different experiments to see which one is going to be um, the best for each different people. But the um, the term anarchism gets a bad rap because the, pe the people that are claiming to be anarchists, especially the ones that maybe particularly are the ones that usually get put before cameras, they're not concerned about the violence. Actually, they're the ones out there perpetuating violence. And so that gives it. And, and to be fair, that, that is, that is a form of anarchism. That, that, that is absolutely a form of anarchism. And so you have to talk about what type of anarchism is, because if you just want no rule in this kind of libertine, I can do whatever I want perspective, that's perfectly a, a legitimate definition of a subset of anarchism. But there's a bunch good. of them. Yeah, there's I, the list of them is a lot. So I'm glad that you were able to sort of like work that out and explain it. Because I think most people listening are going to agree with with the statements that you just made that that would be a way that would right. be. But well, and let me put a clarification statement on that. I didn't cover everything, and I didn't cover it in the perfect. I didn't even address any of the the. Well, what about how who would build the roads <laughs> or who you know. If, if if we don't let the government take our tax money, well, don't you have to replace it with something? I did not address any of that. And you should look at this more. It's not a full-fledged idea. We've covered it one time. You, you may be hearing it for the first time. Don't just dismiss it just because, or dismiss it and never think about it again. But don't think that you have an appropriate response if, you, if you've if you only listened to this and you're done. Right. Because th there, there are legitimate people People like J.R.R. Tolkien was a Christian anarchist. And he wrote a thing that has so many rules in it that to, that a, a TV show was trying to add nudity to it. And the fans were upset because they knew that uh, Tolkien wouldn't like nudity in, in his books. So <laughs> I'm just saying that there are other people. Uh, you know, uh, C.S. Lewis's friend uh, dabbled in it. Uh, he probably wasn't as much a degree, but, um, you know, you have people like uh, uh, um, Calvin who... I, I would assume is an anarchist from a, a standpoint of a, uh, a pe people who want to leave and, and, and disassociate yourself from the group. That's perfectly fine. That fact, that's what we would call for. In, in fact, as Christians, we want unbelievers out of the church as far yeah. as people who claim to be part of the universal invisible church. We want unbelievers out of it because it hurts our identity, our message, 
Uh, it, it, it causes us uh, um, to be divided when we don't need to be divided in those areas. And, and so we, it, it's, it's this, this idea of like Pascal's wager of you can't force anybody into the kingdom of God. And therefore, you can't also force people to obey God's word who aren't regenerate. And so right. we need to have an understanding of what that is and the implications from that. And so all I just want to say is if I did a poor job of it, put that on me and not on the ideas and look into it more or don't. But don't don't think that this is the be all end all for anything you could possibly say on the subject. Yeah, no, that particular subject could literally be like a full series of episodes just on that right. because yeah. it's, and it's really cool. It's actually very, very fascinating. That's what I love about all of these topics. Like we did not get into a lot of, of the uh, specifics with theonomy or theocracy or autonomy, but these are really fascinating subjects. If you, if you guys are bored and you want to look into things like that, those you may not agree with the way that people see it, but it's still fascinating to learn. And then also it helps if you are dealing with, um, Anybody that does agree with these things, you kind of have a better understanding of people who do agree with it. But just for my own personal sake, I love this kind of stuff. I love learning about these kind of things. And I really like to understand how people think. And so it's it's really, really cool. And I wanted to make sure that we discuss that just because I think that there are people who could have misconstrued and also because it's super fascinating. But let's go the opposite extreme. Um, can, I, can I just add one thing? I, no, I think the, the, this, the is quite, not, this is I'm not sorry. anarchy. This, 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 is, this is your... I, I agreed to come on the show by voluntary means. I, 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 I fully, I'm not trying to mansplain anything. I, I think that's, I think that's a uh, punishable by death crime now. It is. That's right. You can't, you can't explain anything to me. Why are you even on the show explaining things? It's just yes, such a horrible sinner. Oh, that's a great point, Lauren. This isn't kind of sinner at all. Mm, yeah. No, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for that. No, please, please make a point. Go right ahead. <laughs> so I, I would say, what what this topic ultimately comes down to is the appropriate use of violence. And you, it, here's the question that that everyone should um, figure out where, what, how they're going to deal with it, and where. At what point does violence come into it? And I mean violence on any standpoint, uh, uh, making other people do your dirty work or you doing it yourself. So, for example, uh, intruder breaks into your house. Do you do you in your own mind? believe that it's okay to kill somebody. Now there are pacifists out there and I, I you know, I, I had Bob Murphy on my show episode 4748 where he's a pacifist. And so he, he's written extensively on this. And so um, I, I would check in with, with his stuff because I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, not, not cover it appropriately here in my one example. There are some people who say, I would let that person kind of do whatever they want. And as long as it doesn't come to ultimate death or even if it does, I'm a Christian, I know where I'm going. I know where my family's going. I don't hold to that position, but I think there are, are cases out there where you can you can make that point and, and have a good discussion. And Bob Murphy, I I I, I, I called him my Brad Pitt in interviews, so I really respect him. And I'm not just really gonna be funny. like, well, I, I I have one uh, bad view of this, and so I'm gonna completely devalue it. But no, I mean, aren't aren't we? Don't we want to be pacifists? Don't we want to have no violence in this world? And so shouldn't shouldn't an ideal be kind of our driving factor? So anyway, that, that, um, I'm sorry, I went off on a rabbit trail there. You have squirrels, I have rabbits. <laughs> That's right. Everybody has to have some kind of rodent. No, I, but I'm glad you mentioned that too. I mean, uh, somebody, I was just talking to somebody up here um, about uh, about that same subject that where we grew up, because there's there's a friend I have up here that's actually from from down south, where we grew up you're taught that if somebody breaks breaks in and enters there's not a question of what you're going to do there there's just an understanding that you're going to shoot the person but you're taught to make sure that you shoot to kill like it, if you're if somebody enters your home without you wanting them to um the the question is never should you shoot them but that you need to make sure that they're good and dead or else you could get in trouble with the courts and so yeah. she said it was it's totally different where we're at now where people heard that and were like you just said that out loud or you do relate like it was shocking to people to hear that where we're at here. Uh, and, and I think some of the difference is probably just that Dallas is dangerous. And so, um, yeah. but yeah, that's fascinating to, to consider those things because where I grew up, it wasn't a consideration. It wasn't something that you even thought through. You just were like, aim for the head. So, so yeah, I think it's important that we discuss these things or at least, think through them before the fact before somebody breaks right. in 
Yeah. Right. So, so there's that. And then there's, I believe it is morally okay to take money from people through threat of force, right? Threat of force, whether or not they agree with it. But there are some people who wouldn't want to do it if it's voluntarily given. And if it wasn't voluntary, we shouldn't make laws to it. We should just have a collection plate. That right. Should we take money for public schools or, or private schools or uh, whatever school system, should it be funded through taxpaying money? It's through the use of force or threat of force for people. And so both Republican, Democrat have to make this determination based on their, their worldview and then where, where violence is okay. Uh, I, 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 I see other people have nuclear weapons. Well, we can't have nuclear weapons. We should kill them. Are, mm-hmm. are we okay with it? Are, are we applying that same standard to us? Well, we're the good guys. Is, is, that, is, that, the, is that the ethical determination that you, you want to make? Is, are you being consistent within your worldview, especially as a Christian? Uh, and honestly, I don't care about, about non-Christians here because uh, I want Christians to live within the confines of the world. I would like other people to live in the confines of their worldview too, but uh, Christianity is the only consistent one. But I want you to live consistently in your Christian worldview. Is it okay to use violence against people who make the determination to use drugs? Have we ever watched the Joe Rogan program where he smokes weed? Should we be okay with federal ATF troops going in and possibly killing him to enforce that law? Are we okay with it? Are you okay? Right. And that, that's what we should ultimately ask within the confines of the first questions here. Do I own my own body? I think we can all agree on, on that. But where where should violence be used, if at all? So, yeah, I, I would think if, if if you're if you know who will build the roads, everything like that. Secondary questions: Do you own your own stuff, including your own body, and how do you operate violently or not? Yeah, but I mean, and these are questions that honestly it, we should we should all <laughs> understand and be asking. But I think it's just that logic and these sort of um, philosophical ideas are not taught in schools. Like I think we were talking about this before uh, we started recording that I mean, if you're just spending 12 years being told a certain idea, um, then then it's going to be difficult for you guys to reason through this. But the encouragement here is that you do actually think through these things because thinking is good. And and that's something that we should do. And, and instead of just being told what to believe, we should right. think through And tradition. Oh, I have a tradition that my family was nothing but police and military and drugs were evil and wrong and bad. I'm okay with evil, wrong, bad. But am I okay with sticking a gun, having somebody stick a gun in their face, possibly killing them over something like weed, which the federal government determines is a Schedule One drug, meaning that it has no beneficial properties to it whatsoever, including medical. We already know that's false, but that's okay. It was come up with by a racist guy, and we're okay when racist people do things at the federal level, and we're 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 okay with it. And so we have to say, oh well, you smoke dope. It shows that there's a reason it's called dope. Fine. What about violence? I don't like the smell of it. Therefore, it, I believe that we should uh, have the threat of force go over there and possibly shoot and kill that person if they don't acquiesce to the rules that we put in place, or can we make an orderly society where people within a determined property line make uh, an explicit agreement with each other not to have things like drugs, including weed? Or maybe weed's fine with you. Or maybe weed is okay with you if it doesn't have THC or, you know, whatever. Uh, anarchism gives you the possibility to have the type of system that you want in place and the type of enforcement that you want. Let's say if you don't go to church in, in, in my uh, on my block, uh, you get whipped 39 times in front of uh in front of everybody hey i agreed to it i i missed church i didn't have a good excuse i was lazy i obviously valued my time over the 39 flashes so i'm gonna get whipped and i've agreed to that now i can be ostracized from the community or whatever else might be there but um you know if, if you'd agree to it at, at some point there's always the possibility to remove your your consent away from uh, uh the, the agreement because you own yourself and at what value uh, is violence okay? Yeah. And, and not saying that you actually want anybody to get whipped 39 times, but just making the point that those are the options. And that was really the great thing that was happening at the beginning of this nation, that there were all these different city states that were sort of kind of doing their own thing and making their own decisions. And, and so now we have 
the opposite of that where we're yeah. really besides Colorado, who's still sort of. And, and then George Washington wanted to, to implement federal troops in the Whiskey Rebellion. And so the, the people that uh, Americans idealized, especially the right, uh, wanted to send federal troops into the states to enact federal policies at the very beginning. It seems like at the very beginning of this nation, the, the experimentation failed because yeah. people are people and imbuing that amount of people with that much power and the use of the the legal, not legitimate, legal use of force was an incorrect thing. Yeah, yeah, it, which is a shame. But so, okay, so I do want to talk about communism, socialism, and Marxism. Yeah, but communism. We're, <laughs> we're going for the opposite extreme of having all of that freedom. But what do you, what do you think would be a, a helpful thing for us to do if you are a believer and you say, hey, you know what? Yeah, this is wrong, and the government shouldn't be able to do all these things. What do we do at that point? Like, uh, we do have the gun to our head. I mean. There's actually not a lot of voting options here, even for somebody who would say, hey, we're, we're not going to hold you at gunpoint and double taxation constantly all over the place. What, what do we do here as Christians? Is our pretty much our only option just to pray and be educated? Or what do you think? Yeah, so I, I think that there is a lot of uh, good biblical um, passages that talk about um living appropriately within the land. So understanding that, um, and this kind of gets into a little bit of a topic we're going to cover later, probably in another episode at this point. Um, but uh, to, to understand that we are um, of the world, but we're not, we're, we're, we're in the world, but we're not of the world, right? We're, we've been removed, we've been separate, but we still have to live within the confines of it. And so um, within the confines of your state or wherever you might reside, um, you should do everything in your power to live in peace and harmony so as to not bring the wrath of the state upon you and Christians, right? So th there are times, and I, I, here, here again, let me put the caveat. This is a wealth of discussion that you can talk about. We can talk about the American Revolution. You can talk about a guy getting arrested for not wearing a mask and praying in Idaho. We can talk about all that. What I'm talking about here is a general principle on this one particular way in order to start a conversation. So. I don't know what I'm talking about. You don't have to listen to me. There you go. I gave you your out. You're fine. <laughs> and so, so live, do whatever in your means to, to not bring disgrace upon the name of Christ or, or, um, or the church. And so I pay my taxes. I believe it's that, but I don't want others, including my family to be held at a point of a gun for me to be ideologically right. Now I want to push for as few taxes as possible, including none. But then I also want the ability to then take what I fully have and give to the appropriate places that uh, I feel are appropriate for things like not Planned Parenthood that were required to that if if everyone who voted for Hillary Clinton paid it's like six dollars everyone who voted for Hillary Clinton paid six dollars uh, um, to um, Planned Parenthood they would fully fund Planned Parenthood for that year and if they paid thirty. That's how much the, that Planned Parenthood made in a single year. So pay 30 bucks. Everybody who voted for the person that wants to do it, you, you fully funded uh, Planned Parenthood for that, for that year. Congratulations. You, you're, you're an anarchist. Or I'm going to make the other 46 million people who voted against that and the uh, uh, 62 million that didn't vote and then the little children and then probably your children's children because we're borrowing. We're not actually paying money that we actually have. Uh, to Planned Parenthood. And that's that's more moral because that's how democracy works. Or we should let people keep 100% of their stuff and they should give it to whoever they want. Or how about we not pay for the war state? I don't want to kill brown people over in Yemen. I don't want to starve children over there for Saudi Arabia's uh, uh, political system. Can, can I not? Nope. Nope. I have to. We live in a democracy. And so but unfortunately, I have to do that in, in order to live peacefully within the, the scope of where I'm in. And again, we can talk about when it's okay to, to, to go against what uh, the state says and, and everything like that. There are biblical principles in place, but um, another show me. Yeah, that, yeah, but that's very, very helpful, I think, for anybody that was like, but I don't have any other option. What am I supposed to do? Nobody is telling you right now to just completely and totally go against 
um, the government that's holding the gun. So um, yeah, that's really, really helpful. I think it's it's also helpful just to understand that when we are able to live peacefully, that it does it does bring glory to God that that his um, his people are not burning things in the street like other folks seem to want to do right now. So, okay. Um, and we probably will have to make this actually a two part, um, episode because we do have a lot more things on this list, but before we, uh, close out, let's, let's do, uh, the socialism and then, and then we'll, we'll, we'll take this down, but yeah, communism, socialism, Marxism, um, these ideals go directly against the idea of Christian anarchy. Um, and, and really, Actually, I, w- I would disagree. I, oh, I would okay, disagree with, with that. Yeah. Uh, so Christian anarchy says uh, about the proper use of force within the Christian worldview. If you want to start a Christian state where you're completely socialist or Marxist, you have the ability to do that within my system. I don't have the ability within a uh, an anarch- uh, a, a Christian communist or a Christian socialist or just a socialist or, or Marxist to have my system within theirs. So you ah. perfectly have the freedom to do your your standard government within your as long as you don't uh, uh, aggress upon on upon me or others, and that uh, that you respond through force defensively. So yeah, you, you're you're more than happy to. I think it would fail, and I think you're going to come over to my house <laughs> a few more times for for food. But you know, I was just going to say I could get a lot of people to join me, but they'll eventually leave. So it'll <laughs> fail. <laughs> yeah. When you have to build walls to keep people in, your system is failing. Yeah, I guess that's probably the real issue with with these uh, worldviews is is not just that they are um, failing, but that they're they're forced they're forced on people. So it's not just right. that communism is uh, going to fail; it's also that the people within these. Um, and what is it right now in China? Are they um, communistic or so, so? So they're socialist politically, but. Uh, uh, crony capitalist economically. So they, they operate within the system of capitalism because it's beneficial to them, uh, but it's still a state uh, controlled means. And then okay. for politically, you you have only socialism because you have the party and that's... Yeah, what's going on with Hong Kong then? Can you explain that to my poor little brain real quick? <laughs> Man, you, you... This is not on so, the list. So, I, again, I'm, I'm only Patrick. I have, I have I have nothing I have nothing to offer you but an answer that might not be right. Okay, so uh, essentially Hong Kong was a British province back in the day. Uh, it was it was ruled by the Brits, and because it operated within the confines of a a very very removed. I mean, if you think uh, the UK is uh, removed from America by a pond, uh, Hong Kong in the middle of little China is very <laughs> removed from the UK, and so. Hong Kong operates under a plethora of freedoms and liberties. Uh, if you want to start a business, you fill out a, a, a form, and it's really just to to tell somebody that, hey, um, I'm I'm going to start a business, and they're like, I mean, we we're the government, we like paperwork, so we're going to follow this way. Go go fail at whatever you're going to do. I don't care. And so Hong Kong has built itself up as as an anon- an anomaly in in the East as as a, a, a Actualized, realist, uh, um, hands-off approach to to uh, economics. Again, not perfect. People come and go. I'm talking generalities here. Uh, and so, uh, when the UK uh, gave uh, Hong Kong back to China because it's weird, it's like Quebec. You know, Quebec always wants to break off from Canada, but you're landlocked in the middle of in the middle of Canada. Uh, you know, it's unless you're going to dig a big moat around you, it's going to be hard to be like, no, no, see, we're we're separate. But anyway, <laughs> I, I want I want Quebec to be separate, and I want people in Quebec to be separate too. Um, and and so when they gave them back over, there was a a uh, instruction to China that they would they would retain control of of Hong Kong if they didn't interfere. And now China is interfering, and there's nothing that no one will want to do because China's China and the UK is the UK. And, they have these things called nuclear weapons and they're, they're bad and no one should have them. Yeah. Wow. Except everyone okay. should have them. Yes. <laughs> if you don't, if everybody doesn't have one, then there's no mutually assured destruction, Patrick, that's important. Okay. <laughs> there, there are, there, there's good arguments for that. 
However, there's so many bad things for it. But <laughs> it, it's one of those things where it's like, yes, nuclear weapons bad, but nuclear power amazing. Right. And yet we haven't built yeah. one since the 60s because, because, because government. There's no reason. Yeah, government. Yeah, there's really no good reason. I should do a whole episode on the nuclear stuff because that is another one of those things that fascinates me. Kaylee and I were just talking the other day. She was like, I don't understand how splitting an atom makes all this. And so we started getting into it and we were like, wow, this is way more interesting science than I ever would have yeah. understood. I still don't fully understand it, but it's really interesting. Yeah. I, my splitting an atom to turn a, a combine to put put uh, to heat up some uh, water that sends it off in the air and all you have is vapor. It, essentially, Nuclear power is the vaping of the 60s. So Wow. They invented vaping before it was cool. You guys, yeah. we we owe the 60s so much. Um, <laughs> so much. So much. <laughs> There's so so many different things. The Beatles. I have no idea how you're uh, going to edit this episode. <laughs> I'm just not going to. I'm not going to edit it, okay. and this is all going to stay in, and everybody is just going to laugh along with us because my okay. listeners are wonderful, and they they just they love everything, and they are just always like, I'm saying this so that they feel like they have to love everything that I say. So if you put it in there, then you, they you feel have, to like nod, they have to do it. Yeah. Make a subconscious, like, nodding, like, yeah, I do. You're right. That's right. I sat once under a... She's using coercion, everyone. It is coercion. Okay, we really do have a lot of other things on this list, so we might have to turn this into a part two episode because um, I was hoping to talk about uh, the election and stuff that's going on right now, but um, we'll we'll just have to turn this into a part two whenever you have some time because uh, we've we've talked quite a bit about a lot of really really cool stuff, and so now we have to stop. And oh man, uh, if only we could go to perfect system, that would be like the perfect stopping point. Do it. That's what I wanted to do. Yes. Okay. So That's let me just define let, let me just define our, our terms here and then talk a little bit about it and then talk about whether or not this has ever happened before. Okay, <laughs> so socialism is state or central direction uh, over the means of production, distribution, and exchange of those. So means of production, how things are made, capital goods, uh, distribution, how, how they go out, and exchange, meaning what things are worth. And I will say that there are, believe it or not, uh, anarchist socialists. So people that um, uh, want to have a a uh, bottom up approach to uh, socialism, and okay, you can have that. And anarchy, good because no one's using force against it, except within the confines of their system. There's no such thing as property, but that's not everyone. And I don't want to I don't want to uh, paint everyone in the same brush. But uh, I, I will just say that that's why I use say state or central direction over the means of production, distribution, exchange. So you could have something like. Uh, uh, a democracy version of socialism uh, and not the fake one that we keep calling everything right now, <laughs> which is this crony cronyism um, uh, occur under socialism. Then communism is the utopian state without scarcity, meaning that uh, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, how much wood or brick or stone or minerals you have uh, because it's post uh, post scarcity. You can do what whatever you want. Think about the, um, the uh the, in star trek uh, next generation where they just are like uh, uh earl gray coffee and it <laughs> appears and it's there yes. and it's turning energy into matter that's a post scarcity system okay and it directs central control either state or otherwise occurs so uh you have a complete top down approach among everything but it's it's there's so much wealth that wealth ceases to mean anything because everyone is wealthy in the sense that no one has anything against what they don't want. I will say, I don't want to do this in, in my definitions because definitions are supposed to present what the definitions are and not respond to the definition. So uh, Marxism, communism doesn't take into account time, time preference. Time preference. That's it. <laughs> you, can't, you can't make more time. You can't make more time. Okay. Uh, and then Marxism is the political and economic system where uh, society has no class, so there's no class struggle, and you have the each according to his ability, each according to his means. And so, what you have is, uh, Marx said this this progression um, of, of capitalism, and then via Marxism you have socialism, and from socialism you have communism. I don't know where people get scarcity from, but it's this idea that central planning happens so well that uh, the management is of, of of materials is just not there, but. That's again, I, I call it a utopian system because 
um, it, it doesn't it, it doesn't seem possible. <laughs> Well, we don't have replicators yet, Patrick. If once we get replicators, it'll be fine. And I was going to answer one of your questions of, has this ever happened? And I would have said yes, in Star Trek Next Generation. Yes, um, that's you, the only you have time. It. Yeah. Except, and I, and I will that. say, sure, because because it makes it easy. But yes. then you, you're you like, well, why should I be part of the Federation? Why can't I have my own Federation? Well, the Federation let me have... Uh, Federation Two, where we're the better Federation, <laughs> where we actually follow the Prime Directive. And guess what, society, of, of the world, if you're going to implode, we're not going to rescue you because we actually follow the Prime Directive, unlike everybody else. So, because you can make your spaceship <laughs> from from nothing. So, why can't you have your own Federation? So, you should anyway. be able to. I also want to replicate. <laughs> uh, I, I, I will say too, within the the confines of of this system, uh, there's the assumption that man is inherently good, and so when you have uh, uh, things like the gulags. What what theoretically you're trying to do is you're trying to teach your fellow man to love other people, and so you're going to work for the party whether you like it or not. And hopefully, over time, your 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 goodness just reveals itself, and then you go go back. In fact, if you read um, 1984 Wilson and um, this sounds so sexist, but the girl um, uh, <laughs> come come. come Come to view this, the 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 their impending death. They know it's going to happen, and they view it as a good thing because uh, the party has to be supreme in all things, and so uh, th- their past selves must be punished, even though their future actions are in love with the party. And so, um, you know, we can we can talk about nineteen eighty four. It's an amazing book, and all the good things there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you guys should do that book. Cool. That would be. <laughs> We would turn off everybody to that book. <laughs> Tony and I would be talking in, in the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It would still be really cool. I think I think that's really helpful though, just to pinpoint the fact that uh, without the replicator, and even the I mean, even if we're looking at the replicator, um, you still you still can't replicate time. So there really is no way right. to to actually but the people still try they still try to to create these utopias and yeah um, and I, I did talk about this with uh with uh dr murphy in my uh interview episodes i asked the question of uh in the garden of eden uh was uh so so the the idea that uh anarchy uh capitalistically exists under is called anarcho-capitalism so you still have uh um uh, pr- private uh private means of ownership of the means of production so meaning uh you know y- you're making widgets and so you're you're you own the widget makers and so you're selling them um uh, for people that want them and so i asked them in the garden of eden was was there was anarcho capitalism was the the austrian view of economics which is is this uh system what, would we say that it exists and so it it, it seems like there's a plethora of resources there not infinite but at the time it seems like it's there uh but time preference is still is still needed and so you would still want to operate under uh an ideal system and so uh why not communistically it's because even within the scope of man's unfallen nature there is probably where you could make a case for against communism there but once man falls um private means of ownership is the best way in order to uh, have a good distribution of resources that is appropriate. And it's only when you enter into examples like uh, certain ideas of, of state-backed um, uh, economies. So, so uh, you know, uh, Walmart is 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 um, coming in and they're killing mom-and-pop shops. No, they're not. You're killing mom-and-pop shops. You are not <laughs> shopping at mom-and-pop shops. You're going to Walmart. You're 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 holding the sign of Walmart out of here, but a majority of people are going to Walmart and going a mm-hmm. dollar for three short pairs of shorts. Uh, yes, please. I don't <laughs> care where they were made. I don't care who made them. I want to exchange my dollar right. for three shorts. Are you kidding me, Mom and Pop over there? Though those old fogies, they're they're selling them for five, five for three. I'm getting them for one for three. Therefore, I care about my money more than I care about Mom and Pop. And so what mom and pop want to do is they want to get the government to say, I want only a select few of Walmarts around me and I don't want them anywhere near me. And so you use the government force to enact laws to benefit capitalism, which isn't capitalism. So right. you should rise and fall. And so we, we talked a little bit about that and, and everything. Else. So even, even in 
pre-endemic fall, you have uh, an economic system in place, which is open for discussion. Oh, that's so fascinating. I yeah. love that, though. That is so fascinating. You see how fascinating the subject is, you guys, like the logic of all of this stuff and just have to work through all these things rather than just yell and scream and fight and, and catch things yeah. on fire. If somebody disagrees. And understanding you, that, that, that you can make a case for, for an opposite answer. You can make a, a case for that and we can discuss it. And we don't have to like, honestly, if, if you and I, let's say you take the uh, capitalism good under a uh, uh, pre-Adamic fault and I take communism good under it. Do we really need to yell at each other? Do we need to be like, well, we're splitting the church over this? That's right. No, it doesn't. It, it, we, we, can, we can talk about it. We can be like, oh, that's a really good point. Let me see if there's a response to it. And you're like, huh, owned. Nope, sorry. You only get this <laughs> amount of time to it. Yeah. That's two minutes. Two minutes time, and then that's it. Um, and if you don't come <laughs> up with a good enough response, then I feed you to the tigers. So that's right. just how this goes. Brother, I really appreciate you uh, joining me, talking about all of this stuff, and um, also answering all the angry letters that we're going to get. I appreciate you agreeing to do all of those things because you did. Yeah, I, I, I would suggest uh, just a couple things. So, so like uh, Robert Murphy's, uh, he's got a podcast. He's got a lot of books. If, if you're kind of looking at how um, how how would one operate a legal system under anarchy, or uh, what about the military? What, can't you just have people come in? Uh, he's got a really book called uh, Chaos Theory, and um, he's essentially done the presentation of that book uh, to the Mises Institute. So if you just go to YouTube and do Mises Institute and uh, uh, look, look for his stuff, um, they have it for free. They have a lot of stuff for free. Mises uh, mm. is Ludwig von Mises. He, he is an, account, an amazing economist who came up with this time time value theory of preference and uh, kind of uh, brought uh, anarcho uh, capital or Austrian economics um, uh, to the forefront and as a response to Keynesianism, uh, which is another academic thought. And uh, there are implications for um, uh, politics for a following from an economic system. So um, Mises.org has a lot of free stuff, has a lot of good articles um, if, you're, if you're looking for that. And so um, there's a lot more resources out there uh, if you're looking for it, um, and theonomy, um, uh, Bonson's written about it. Uh, John Frame's written about it. Uh, a lot of people have, have done subjects on it. So, um, give it, give it some consideration. Think about where you're using force or where you're making other people use force. And, um, uh, I'm against democracies, even ours. And I want to operate away from you people so that I can be better neighbors. And so we can operate in love with one. So you now go. you can send all yeah. my, all, all, all the all the terribleness that now now we can send yeah. it all to you i'm going to link to just all that remember in that four you years you just have to vote harder if you lose just vote harder yeah vote. i'm really voting harder ah. it's so vote extreme harder. every single time it's the end of the world and and it's really scary <coughs> It's built up so much, but yeah, um, I'm going to link to all those things down below so people can learn about this stuff, because I think that the more educated we are, especially as believers about these things, the better, because you can't come up with an argument with things if you haven't actually read to them. So um, also I'm going to include the links to some of those episodes, because I know that you, you actually dealt with this um, whenever you did that interview. So I'll make sure to include all those links and you guys make sure to subscribe to Caves Across Apologetics so that you don't miss all of this cool stuff like what you just heard because the book club is epic and I'm learning so much. And even uh, the founder of gotquestions.org said that he was learning so much from you guys, which must have been like the highlight of your career. You can quit now. I mean, it was pretty awesome. I, I, I legitimately go to his website probably once a week or like right. I, I, I'm subscribed to this newsletter where it's like, hmm, yes, what does it mean to be all things to all people? Let me read an article about this. And I'm like, yeah, this is amazing. And that he's like, oh, I got to go back. You guys really helped me on this. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? Uh, who? <laughs> oh, uh, us? Oh, we're, I'm literally in my basement filming this, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> see that's what i've been saying this whole time i've been pointing people to your podcast because i'm like you guys are going to learn about all this stuff that's confusing because y'all explain it in a way that's not as confusing and it's a, a really appreciated so i and i appreciate you coming on to talk about this craziness hopefully we can uh, appreciate you some time me you appreciate me even though i, did I appreciate this. you absolutely because <laughs> in an anarchist system you cannot have pineapple on any pizza that you desire if I was creating an anarchist system, that'd be in the rules in the contract. So you wouldn't be allowed <laughs> to live there. <laughs> I wouldn't have fruit and desserts. 
No, no, that's right. All right, brother. I'm so thankful for you joining me and hopefully we'll get to chat again soon. And God bless you. I really appreciate everything you guys are doing. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, humblebees. Hopefully you found that as fascinating and edifying as I did. I just want to remind you guys, if you're listening, if there were things that you heard that you were concerned or you didn't agree with or anything like that, that we were having a discussion about uh, belief systems that exist, not necessarily belief systems that we would hold to or uh, things that we would agree with. This was actually just discussing these things that have been um, in existence so that we could flesh through it all and, and really see what what it all means because I don't know about you guys, but I get really confused whenever there are two sides of, of a opinion and they're arguing with one another and they are misrepresenting each other. It becomes really, really confusing whenever you read through one whole thing and you're like, wow, that's fascinating. And I just can't believe another side would believe this. And then you go to the other side and the other side is like, that's not what we believe at all. I don't even know what that guy's talking about. I, it gets really confusing for me. So I'm excited to have had this conversation where we could sort of flesh these things out really learn what these terms are because they get thrown around a lot. And like Patrick kept mentioning, it's important to define your terms and, and semantics is a game that we, we don't want to play as Christians. So we need to really be specific. And so hopefully this helped you guys. There are a lot of links down below. And most importantly, I hope that this was just a very interesting conversation for you guys, because that's really fascinating stuff for me. And I really, really enjoyed getting to research this and talk about it. So Guys, don't forget to um, subscribe to the channel here if you are listening on podcast form. If you can subscribe, that is a blessing to me. Also, if you're listening on the uh, YouTube channel, if you're watching that listening, because that would make more sense. If you could subscribe and click that little bell button, that'll tell you whenever I go live because I'm going to be going live every Friday except for the 16th. I won't be going live on the 16th of October. But other than that, I will be live every Friday, usually 3.30 or 6.30, one of those two times, Central Standard Time. And yeah, uh, that's it. That's all I have for you guys today. God bless each and every one of you, Humble Bees. I will talk to y'all later. Bye. Thanks for listening, Humble Bees. This is Tulips and Honey. Over and out. I think that diamond still needs a little more polish. Yeah. <laughs> Check, check. I can hear you, but I can't see you. <laughs> We're 50% of the way there, though. You're there. It helps to plug things in. <laughs> I'm clicking buttons on my end, but it's probably not actually going to help anything. At least we have stuff for the bloopers already. My computer's on a box right now. I know. <laughs> whole kit. <laughs> It feeds it back through the soundboard so I can hear me too, like a professional. I don't know why people do that, but. I turned mine off so I couldn't hear myself because it made me really confused. <laughs> I don't understand why I can't just watch whatever I want to watch. Because some of them have scary chicken ladies, okay? And I don't want you to have to see scary chicken ladies. And I was like, you can't do that. You can't, yeah. you can't talk about my Thanks, I appreciate this one. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, this is all worth it. <laughs> I'll try and answer to the best of my ability and say I don't know Sweet. the things I don't know. I'm gonna pepper you with lots of questions then. <laughs> That's the first joke I ever told taught Kaylee. By the way, she was like two, and I taught her to say, um, "How do you know when a politician is lying?" And she would say, "His mouth is moving." <laughs> In her tiny little baby <laughs> voice, it was really cute. Since yeah. that's kind of like a revenue for the podcast, I thought that maybe it would be good for it to actually look like a real shop and not something pathetic like my website. <laughs> One of these days I'll be hashtag professional, but not today. Like I feel like my ideal of heaven is just like God gives me a, a Kindle that doesn't need to be replugged and he goes, okay, for the first like 100,000 years, you get to sit in this nice comfy chair and read all the book. Okay, we need to get therapy. But anyways. I can focus. I'm sorry. Yeah. So anyway, sorry. That was a squirrel. Mine? I have a dog in the background because she just busted through the door. I'm sorry. Okay. Looper. So yeah. Yes, that's right.